Good afternoon, I'm Charlotte McBride and you're watching PA Harness Week. Well, Christmas is just 10 days away, but Christmas came early for a few guys named Eric. I've got the details on the wild winds by two drivers that share the same name. It's coming up next. This past Sunday was Eric Day at Harris, Philadelphia. We'll explain next. Plus, I'll introduce you to driver Jonathan Roberts. And we'll take you back in time to 1960 for a look at one of the greatest Phillies of all time. It's all coming up. Comcast Sportsnet is your channel for racing's fastest-paced half hour. It's starting right now. Oh, they go. Explosive matter hits the Colonial easily. Underway. Hello there, Harness Racing fans, and welcome to another edition of, you know the name of the show, it's called PA Harness Week, along with Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross, as usual, and we are winding down, we are deep in the home stretch of our 2012 season, Heather, which brings a tear to the eye, and the racing fans are out there just, drool is just falling out of their mouths, it's just, it's unbelievable. Sorry about that, guys, but you know what, we'll be back in April. But this season is not finished yet. Why, pray tell? Because, guess what? The final week of the season, which will be Saturday, December 29th, that's our last show, we will have a year in review show. And you guys, talk about blasts in the past, you will get to see me driving a harness race several years ago at Garden State Park. And if we have time, the lovely Bruce Casella, who also is an undefeated harness driver with a 1000 UDR, and we have to get it on, a little smack down, a little raw action sometime soon, okay? That sounds like a great show. You know, I, maybe I'll join you too. Maybe have you I'll been in a race? <laughs> No, I do not drive horses because I do not like being seen in the same outfit more than once. Oh, so. they don't drive horses, do they? <laughs> okay, I got to give you a great quote before we start the show. Got to tell me who you think this is from, okay? You ready? Okay. I would rather have a prostate examination on live television by a guy with very cold hands than have a Facebook page. Um... You didn't say that because you have a Facebook page. That's me. It's actually my friend, my Facebook friend, George Clooney. Oh, okay. No, he actually did say that. Oh, I believe it. Okay. You Great. Do? Yeah. I think Shall so. we get to racing? <laughs> Why not? All right. We've Why covered we... everything else. Okay. <laughs> Sunday second here at Harris, Philadelphia, and Heather's got that baby for you. Yes, we have a claiming handicap, ten thousand to twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Now, number three is Top Chef. The favorite in here, very lightly raced this season, but coming off a really good effort. Then it's number two is Ashcroft. Now, this horse was a Pocono regular, um, but now the end of the meet at Pocono, he's here to this 5 8 mile track. And number five is Lady Sorrow. She raced on the half mile earlier in the fall, but really loves this Harris track. This year and last year, she took her seasonal best year. 29 and 4 for the first quarter, and Peggy's laughter at 16 to 1. Controls the terms, leading a length and a half to in second spot, Max Molly Hall. They're three better than Lady Sorrow, third by three more. Photo review is seven and a half from the front with a half mile to go. Two more to Ashcroft, who gained into fifth. Caviar Royale's laboring inside the half mile, overtaken as well by Che. And far back last remains Top Chef. 59 and 3 for the half mile. And with three eighths to go, Peggy's Laughter maintains a length and a half advantage over Max Molly Hall, who's drafting from the pocket and ready to pounce when the time is right. Lady Sorrow closed to within three lengths of the lead and was guided wide by Eric Goodell outside the quarter pole. Two more to Ashcroft, up into fourth, going evenly right now. Photo reviews struggling to keep up, dropping back six and a half from the front. Che has seven to make up while in the clear. Two and a half more to Caviar Royale, and they hit three quarters in one twenty-nine and two. They come to the top of the stretch. Peggy's laughter, 16 to one, trying to take them all the way, is set down for the drive. Chased home by on the outside. Lady Sorrow drifting out. Max Molly Hall was cut loose up the open stretch. Lady Sorrow now the advantage down to the line. Lady Sorrow. Sorrow wins by a length. Peggy's laughter was just a giggling. <laughs> That's right. Past the quarter, past the half.
half past the three-quarter pole, but it was Lady Sorrow with Eric Adele driving, picking up the win in 159. Sorrow yep. beat the happy horse? I know. Can you imagine that? Sure. All right. But um, these trotters, um, this is actually an off track. You know, they go in 159, but it was raining a little bit on Sunday. But this win kicked off a four-bagger for Eric Adele. Now, two horses reached the wire at the same time for the second money. Peggy's Laughter was second. Max Molly Hall was third. Now, I'm going to pull a Steve Ross on you, okay? We're going to go for one of those quirky angles. Right. You put Lady Sorrow on top. Okay. Peggy's Laughter for second. $35 exacta. Not really going to buy you a BMW, but I always say a short price is better than a long face. Okay, there you go. Let's continue now. Fourth race here at Harris Philly on Sunday. It was a condition pace for Phillies and Mares. Non winners at 9500 bucks in their last five starts. 13000 bucks on the line. Number seven, she's a bragging dragon with Tim Tietrich. And at number six, Shawnee Dancer with Georgie Knapp. And number one, Mano Cornudo with Dave Miller were all co favorites at five to two. Number four, Rockin' Bell with Ron Pierce was nine to two. And with the call, James Witherett. And Shawnee Dancer is striding aggressively to the front. Shawnee Dancer Falter just broke stride. Six Shawnee Dancer while challenging Dreams Bar for the lead made a break in stride. And Dreams Bar is uncontested a length and a half in front coming off the first turn. Rock and Bell now slides out of the pocket. Mono Cronudo has gained into third. Wide of Ms. Betty's Hope, the front four covered by four lengths passing his first time. She's a Brag and Dragon, is fifth moving to the outside, and will try to catch the cover of Mono Cronudo moving to the bridge turn. We Be American is five and a half lengths off the lead. Moving third over from sixth, then it's three farther back to Carol's Ideal and dropping out last. Some seven lengths detached from the main group is Shawnee Dancer. 57 and one and a half mile after a 28 and two first quarter. And Mono Cornudo took over the lead by a length and a half, clearing Rock and Bell before arriving on the backstretch. She's a Bragg and Dragon is left uncovered. Now up into third, a length and three quarters from the lead. She's a Bragg and Dragon just took second from the now locked in Rock and Bell. And she's a Bragg and Dragons up within three quarters of Mono Cornudo. We Be American was towed up second over two from the front. Carol's Ideal's got three and a half to make up. Wide of Dreams Bar shuffled back into the sixth spot. Ms. Betty's Hope is behind excess cover. Five off the lead. A length off last is Shawnee Dancer saving ground. Three quarters in 126 and two. And they stack up for the sprint home. Mono Cornudo's lead cut to just ahead. She's a Bragg and Dragons between rivals. We Be Americans in the three path. But they were all passed by a four wide Carol's Ideal deal who slingshots to the four at the 16th carol's ideal pulls clear by three here's the deal all the chalk got rubbed out i mean like gone nowhere number eight carol's ideal the 15 to one bomber with eric adele came from the men's room to win by three and 155 flat number two miss betty's hope off a of 25 to one with harry landy dead heated for second another heater um, with she's a bragging dragon all right and when we come back, we're going to have some more about the Eric influence, or is it the Eric influenza at Harris, Philadelphia? And more stuff going on. Don't go away. Libra Vita is taking his shot at Nice Dream right now. They're heads apart. Mohegan Sun, Off-Track Wagering, Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. NF Quotable got Why do so many winners ball. travel in EB trailers? They love the ride. EB Pay Center Trailers deliver your horses in peak condition, ready to race every time. Designed to provide safe and comfortable transport for standard bred racehorses, EB's Paysetter Series trailers are the preferred choice of professional standard bred trainers and breeders nationwide. All EB Paysetter models feature custom standard bred options and excellent airflow and aligned interior ceiling to keep your horses fresh and comfortable. Every EB trailer has commercial quality componentry and riveted sidewall construction engineered and designed to stand up to constant and rigorous horse and road use. And a sleek aerodynamic nose design that also delivers improved fuel savings. More winners ride with EB than any other trailer. 
EB, setting the pace in standard bred horse transportation. Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Hello there, and welcome back to PA Harness Week. She's Heather Moffat. I'm Steve Ross, and our roving correspondent, Charlotte McBride, caught up with a real SOB. SOB? Yes, he's the son of Bib. Oh. SOB. His name is Jonathan Roberts. He's a trainer driver here on this circuit. And here's what Charlotte and him had to say. Thanks, guys. I'm here with driver Jonathan Roberts. Jonathan, I hear you're a third generation horseman. What got you started in this? Uh, it's a family business. My grandfather did it, and then my dad got into it, and I sort of followed my dad. Did you ever think of yourself doing anything else? No. No, I really didn't have a whole lot of interest in the horses till about midway through high school, and then there was no question. What's your favorite part about driving horses? Uh, the, the competition, you know, just going out there and racing the horses and the competition between the guys and the horses, I think that's probably my favorite part. I'm sure you've had a lot of big moments throughout your career. Mm -hmm. Any favorite moments? Uh, Dad's horse winning the eliminations for a lot of those big trots, and, you know, they were pretty big moments. We got to do a lot of traveling with him, and that was a whole lot of fun. Any big goals that you set for yourself each year? No, just trying to take it day by day more than anything, you know, just winning races and doing well. How many more years do you see yourself doing this? <laughs> as many as I can, <laughs> put it that way. That's, I think, everybody's answer, you know, as long as I can do it and be competitive and uh, stay healthy. And for the holidays are coming up, any big holiday plans for you? Uh, no, just Christmas with the family. You know, that's about it. Uh, a couple birthdays. My son's right after Christmas, his birthday, and that's about it. All right, well, happy holidays to you. Thank you. Back to you guys. All righty, let's get back to some racing. You ready for some racing? Now you're ready for a trot? You're ready for a claiming trot? You want to sink your teeth into something really hardy? The lady's got it for you. I do, all right. Claiming handicap, 15 to $20,000. Purse is $14,000. Number six is Lee Bravita. He's a favorite in here. Now, we saw Dylan Davis and Eric Adele team up together earlier in the show to have a win. This is another Dylan Davis trainee. Mm -hmm. Number four is Jedrick Hanover. Now, really new to this area. Just came to Pennsylvania in October, and this is only his third start at Philadelphia. Number eight is Nice Dream. Won this class last time out, but had a little easier post now he's got the way outside eight post nice dream sweeps up three across the track to take the lead nice dream will set the tempo as they round the first turn pulling clear of jedrick hanover by two tootie's a length and a half back in third libra vita settles in five and a half lengths off the lead the seven to five favorites in fourth position followed by back from vacation and bet it all ladanian a second last by two and a half mr fenwick's at the rear of the field 13 lengths off the leaders, first quarter, 28-4. and four. Passing us on the first occasion, Jedrick Hanover. Still going a bit oddly. He's taken over by, by three-quarters of a length from Nice Dream. But Nice Dream's fighting right back at the inside to reclaim command. So Jedrick Hanover is relegated to second spot. And we'll try to wedge into the pocket just in front of Tootie. These three covered by three lengths with a half mile to go. Libra Vita moves first over. Just past races midpoint back from vacation tracks cover. And is now five lengths from the lead. Bet it all has seven to make up, followed by Ladanian. And Mr. Fenwick remains at the rear of the field. Eight and a half lengths would cover the lot, 57 and three for the half mile. Three eighths to go. Libra Vita is taking his shot at Nice Dream right now. They're heads apart. Libra Vita, a narrow advantage with five sixteenths to go. Nice Dream trying to stay right with him, and they're two better than Jedrick Hanover, who's back to third. Back from vacation, could not stay with cover, but is mildly on the improved three from the front. Tootie's pinned down at the pegs, four and a half lengths adrift. Mr. Fenwick launches a three wide bid from the back of the pack. Pass Ladanian and Bet it All left a joint last, but only five and a half lengths would cover the entire field. Three quarters and 127 and three. Off the corner, Libra Vita, three quarters in front. Nice Dream trying to fight back under pressure, back from vacation driven out. Jedrick Hanover re rallying up the open stretch. Libra Vita bearing in late, but Libra Vita. Libra Vita and Eric Adele make a first step move and then hold off Jedrick Hanover in the last step. This trotter wins at 158. 
Now, um, Libra is astrology. That's an astrology term. And then Vita is Italian for life. But I have no idea what Libra Vita means. I'm still not sure about the horse's I name. I have no idea what you just said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jedrick, you're not the first one and you won't be the last. Jedrick Hanover with Eric Carlson was second. So we have Eric Adele winning, Eric Carlson finishing second, and then Eric Abatella was third. Was um, he really? No, I'm totally kidding. He wasn't even in the race. Andy Miller was third. You can't believe a word the woman says. <laughs> Back from vacation with Eric Miller and the bike got up for the show spot. Okay. Another trot, the ninth Sunday here at Harris Philly. It was a condition trot for non what is it, 13000 bucks in their last five. 17 dimes on the line. Number two, MC Felix with Eric Adele. And number four, Automatic, named, I suppose, after the Pointer Sisters hit of 1985 with Rob Pierce's five to two. Number five, Max Bad Boy was four to one with Eric Carlson. Let's see what happens. Max Bad Boy a neck in front moving to the first turn. We'll have to clear automatic. Automatic pushing through between rivals. Celebrity Obsession eases back into third. MC Felix is five lengths from the front while fourth. Next in line is Mohegan Hanover. Waldorf Hall came away eight and a half lengths off the lead. Two more to spice it up. Lindy's second last. R. Sam is the back marker. Twelve lengths off the lead of Eric Carlson and Max Bad Boy. Max Bad Boy a length and a half leader to Automatic in second spot. First quarter, 28 and three-fifth seconds. Passing us on the first occasion, Max Bad Boy Automatic are one, two. Celebrity Obsession stocks from third at 39 to one. MC Felix is fourth. Mohegan Hanover angles wide, and Waldorf Hall's going to track cover. MC Felix was just flushed out from the fourth spot, so Mohegan Hanover is going to be second over on the bridge turn. And R. Sam's got more room to save ground, moving up to within five lengths of the lead. Waldorf Hall is third over, with five and a half to make up. And a length and a half off last to spice it up. Lindy, 58 and 2 for the half mile. They straighten away up the back stretch with Max Bad Boy a length and a half in front. MC Felix took second in the breeze. Wide of automatic. Mohegan Hanover is second over, sitting two and three quarters behind Max Bad Boy, 5 16 from home. Celebrity Obsession begins to labor inside of rivals. Waldorf Hall was caught in a blind switch by a three wide spice it up Lindy, who's gained it within four of the front. And R. Sam dropped out last, six lengths off the lead. Three quarters, 127 and one. Three sixteenths from home. MC Felix going to take his shot now at Max Bad Boy, closing to within a half length. Mohegan Hanover moves three wide off the corner. Automatic awaits the open stretch. They turn for home. Max Bad Boy driven out a length in front from MC Felix. Automatic driven to give chase up the open stretch. Mohegan Hanover flattened out. Up to the line. Max Bad Boy still there. Max Bad Boy. Shocking. The Eric Show continued with a one-two finish. Max Bad Boy left, grabbed the top, led every step of the way, winning a by a length of 156-2. M.C. Felix was second. Automatic. It's totally automatic. It was third. I'm all hung up with the Pointer Sisters. All right. What's with this Eric thing going on the whole day? This is nuts. This is a track. You know, you know Tim Tetrick, Yannick Jingra, you know Dave and Andy Miller, those guys, Corey Kelly. But Eric's rue the day? I'm telling you, I was wondering the same thing. It was a big Eric day. What can I say? Stay with us when we come back. Big stuff is going on. I'm talking big stuff. Dial or no dial, your favorite horse. Stick around, won't you? Dial or no dial's got three and a half to make up at the quarter pole. Horses helping people. People helping horses. At Equilibrium, horses help those with special needs achieve balance in body, mind, and spirit, while Equilibrium's people give retired horses the forever home they deserve. Join in the giving and help spread the joy of equine-assisted activities. Visit www.equi-librium.org to learn more and make a tax-deductible contribution today. Equilibrium, a helping hoof for those in need. Tonight, it's ladies' night. The lights are low, and the stakes are high. Sometimes ladies' night is just a date night in disguise. At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Welcome back to the show. She's Heather. I'm Steve. You're you. And as promised, 
big race, big doings, feature race, 50,000 bucks in the line, and Heather's got all the 411 for you. Okay, yes, huge pacers here. First of all, we have number six we will see. He's the even money favorite for a good reason. He's been racing against the top older pacers all year long and all over North America, Canada, here in the United States. And he's only made a measly 2.5 million in his career, okay? All right, number four is Mears Hanover. He's two to one. He's had three months off, like, during the summer. He's only had a couple starts back now. Number seven, Dial or No Dial, looking for his third straight victory, and he won the Open last time out. They're off. Mears Hanover, fast off the mark from the center of the racetrack, flanked by 18, pushing the pace, and Abelard Hanover in close attendance, too. Keystone Velocity is a close-up fourth. Four lengths off the leaders as they sprint into the first turn. Then it's two and a half back to Hypnotic Blue Chip in fifth. We will see is already 10 lengths off the battle up top. And two and a half better than trailer Dial or No Dial. Coming off the first turn, Mayor's Hanover. Forrest Abelard Hanover into the pocket. And 18 tracks from third off a 26 and four first quarter over the off going. Passed us the first time. Mayor's Hanover is a length and three quarters in front now from Abelard Hanover. Hypnotic Blue Chip is first over, taking third wide of 18, a locked in fourth. We will see his second over as they enter the bridge turn. Carried to within four lengths of the lead, dial or no dial, is following the favorites cover to the half mile, passing Keystone Velocity at the back of the pack. Just six lengths now would cover the lot after a 56 and four half mile. And Mayor's Hanover is tackled by Hypnotic Blue Chip with three eighths to go. Mayor's Hanover, a neck in front. Hypnotic Blue Chip is chipping away at the advantage of Mayor's Hanover. With We Will See in a prime stocking spot. A joint third with a pocket sitting Abelard Hanover. Dial or no dial's got three and a half to make up at the quarter pole. Wide of 18. And Keystone Velocity moved fourth over from the back of the pack. And now Ron Pierce gives We Will See the green light. Three quarters, 125 and one. We Will See moves up three wide. The pass hypnotic blue chip for second, but it's still a half length away from Mayor's Hanover as the field turns for home. Mayor's Hanover full out, chased home by We Will See. Late on the scene, dial or no dial. Up to the line, We Will See almost there. We will see in a photograph with dial or no dial. The first quarter goes in 26 and 4, and Mayor's Hanover is able to back it down like big time, uh, hoping to get the job done, obviously. But you know, the front end on this day just was not holding up. It's a sloppy track, like two out of 14 races on this card were able to cut the mile. So horses coming from the back of the pack to win including this one with dial or no dial. He is last ends up being first in 153 and 1. David Miller in the bike. Are you they sure that wasn't Eric Miller? <laughs> you know what? Hmm. Oh, this, this was a different day. Oh, uh, right. It wasn't Eric Forget Day, right? Scratch okay. up your memory banks. <laughs> they pay fourteen dollars. We will see. Also came off the pace. He was second. Mears Hanover did take third. Okay, stay with us. When we come back, we are going to have our blast from the past, and we're going back to 1960, which was about 175 years ago, or maybe it just seems that way. Stay with us. There's one filly, number five, Countess Adios, and she leads narrowly as they come around the first time. Mohegan Sun, Off-Track Wagering, Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. Hi, and welcome back to the show. Guess what, Heather? What, Steve? It's time for our Blast from the Past. The year, 1960. That's right. Over a half century ago, the venue, Roosevelt Raceway. The crowd, 
40,000 crazed harness racing fans. They turned out for the third jewel of Basing's Triple Crown. I'm speaking, of course, of the Messenger Stakes. And it gives us great pride and pleasure to show it to you right now. 40,000 fans watch a field of 10 three-year-olds cross the starting line in the richest one-heat race in harness. The Messenger Stake with a total of nearly $143,000 prize money. Philly, number five, Countess Adios, and she leads narrowly as they come around the first time. The breeder, trainer, and ace driver Del Miller is in the sulky. Close behind is Devon Goose, number one, with Hugh Bell driving. The favorite, Major Goose, number eight, is way back and can't get through the field. On the back stretch of the last circuit, it's still Countess Adios in the lead. Devon Goose staying close, and Muncie Hanover, number three, making a strong challenge on the outside. Santos Adios draws on a fantastic reserve to show magnificent finishing speed and cross the finish going away with a length and a half margin. A pretty first for a stylish filly worth over $71,000 first prize money. You know, when I watch these blasts, I love them, but they're black and white, it's kind of grainy and everything, and it lends to the authenticity of it all. It's kind of neat, you know? It is neat. And you see all these people out at the racetrack. You know, 40,000 people came out to see this race. Well, and she was an unbelievable mare. And Countess Adios, you're talking yes. about. Yes. Right? And, you know, she won two of the jewels for the pacing triple crown. She wow. won the cane. She won the messenger. The only reason, honestly, she didn't win the little brown jug is because she wasn't eligible to it. Otherwise, she would have kicked butt in there. I also want to mention she was free-legged. She wore no hobbles. And she wore heels? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and on top of that, get this. Okay, she retired with a mark of 157 and 3, all right? She also could trot. She did a time trial where she trotted into a 1 and 2. So she was absolutely unbelievable. How do you know? You're making that up? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know if I was. <laughs> that is too funny. Okay, guess what now? It is time for the final open stakes race of the 2012 season. It is the Cleveland Classic from Northfield, and here are the contenders. Number one, thinking out loud with Dave Miller was the one to two chalk. Number two, Pet Rock, seven to two with Doug McNair. Number three, Bolt the Doer with Mark McDonald was the four to one third choice, and here's the call. Thinking out loud now kicks away by three. Over there second is Pet Rock. Bolt the Doer is racing third. In fourth comes a rock and finish as they go to three quarters. Thinking out loud is there in one, 22 and one. To the final turn in the Cleveland Classic. Thinking out loud by two. Pet Rock is their second. Bolt the Doer is showing headway. From the outside then is Mortals in. Inside rock and finish as they move to the top of the stretch. Thinking out loud turns first. Bolt the Doer is coming at him on the outside. Passing lane for Pet Rock. Bolt the Doer on the outside strikes the front and Bolt the Doer. Bolt the Doer did win in the Classic at 151 flat. Pet Rock just beat out Thinking Out Loud for third. So all the open stakes for the year have now gone. They're in the history books, ladies and gentlemen. And that's going to do it for us, Heather. Another right. edition of PA Harness Week is in the books. And for all of us here, including Bruce Casella, my partner Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to get high on harness. It's only natural. Oh, they go. Explosive matter wins the Colonial easily. Underway. Starts fast, 